listening to the Mobcast Network. Welcome to the Cold Movie Cantina. Yes, hello, welcome hey. to our podcast. <laughs> this is the podcast that looks at some of your favorite cold films. Mm-hmm. As mm-hmm. an alcoholic beverage, we she, will. Uh, we will. Um, she's not here with us. She's not here with us, though, today. and uh, we talk about it. You've uh, skipped my spot the last two weeks. What? Shows it to oh, someone somebody, who's not that's seen it. Sorry, sorry. Like you just sk- sorry. We, we talk uh, about her not being here. And you're like, I, and then we talk about it. Well, sorry, because boom, done. Because Steph's not here, and it throws everything off. <laughs> Please fix it. Correct. Okay, <clears throat> take two. <laughs> this is the podcast that look at some of your favorite cult films. We do as an alco- alcoholic beverage. She's not here today, though. Shows that someone who's not seen them. <gasps> Me, hello, <laughs> I'm here, present. <laughs> and then we talk about it. Yay. I'm your neighbor, American Pop Culture Spirit Guide, uh, Scotty, and I'm joined by, as always, she's not here. And we're also joined by... Justina, your jellical jester. She who knows, knows no, no movies. movies. Admiral... At your service. At ease. <laughs> See, we got through some of it. We did. Well done. Um, uh, You can find us on any podcast app uh, where... Uh, I'm screwing this all up. Yeah. I'm also joining us today is our producer. I am number uh, two. Yeah, that's right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> there it is. There it is. He's here too. It's. A, I, I'm gonna blame the new medication. <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> you have imbalanced our chair. <laughs> the legs don't work. Right. I just. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who does number two work for? <laughs> you he guys. He works for us. <laughs> there we go. You can listen to us on any podcast app. You're probably listening to us on a podcast app. Please rate and subscribe. It helps us out. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash cultmoviecantina, where you can play games like uh, Wrong Title Only and uh, Name This Band and other things I'm coming up with as we go along. Uh, you're on YouTube. We're on YouTube, not you. You are you not. will be when you're looking for us on YouTube. We're on at YouTube at uh, Mopcast Network, and uh, we're on TikTok now. I've been loading up TikToks. TikTok. So we're on TikTok. This week, we are watching the 1991 cult classic and dare say real classic uh, Silence of the Lambs directed by Jonathan Den- Demme written by Thomas Harris and uh, Ted Talley it really was written by Ted Talley Thomas Harris was just the source material uh, he had no involvement He because w- he's uh, notoriously shy and he's like Aww. he doesn't want to bother anybody uh, stars Jodie Foster as Clary Starling Anthony Hopkins as Dr. Hannibal Lecter this time with a C not a K uh, Scott Glenn as Jack Crawford, Anthony Hild as Dr. Frederick Chilton, uh, Frankie Faison as Barney, Ted Levine as James Gum, and uh, Brooke Smith as Catherine Martin. Do we have some fun facts or activities for the day? Uh, so if you have seen this film, you will notice that there's a lot of riddles, if you will. He likes to speak in a way that makes you think and ponder your existence in life. A lot of anagrams, too. He's a fond fan of anagrams. Yep. Yes, he is. So I brought the trivia games this time. And Woo-hoo! since Stephanie is out, producer Caleb, oh. number two, you get to play along. Oh, boy. This is trivia from the 90s. Dun, dun, dun. Question one. Yes, how do we buzz in? Uh, right. How are we doing this? Are let's we go back and forth. Oh, okay. Back okay. and forth. So this was for you. Okay. All right. Scotty. Yes. What was the name of the pink Mighty Morphing Power Ranger? I have options too. Yes, please. But I was kind of hoping you would just throw it down like I, you do, I, Rain Man. Um, I have names in my head, but I'm not sure exactly, so I will need options. Kay. Also, unfair colorblind. <laughs> Um, okay, but first of all, there's two <laughs> ladies, so just know one of the two names. Kimberly, Katie, Casey, or Catherine? Kimberly. It is Kimberly. That is correct. Because right, I keep wanting to say Caleb. Amy, but that's her real name. <laughs> that is exactly what I would expect from you and nothing less, to know both of the names. I just couldn't remember all right, which Caleb. was real or fake. All right. <laughs> what was the first Mary-Kate and Ashley movie? <laughs> I don't know this one. You got. <laughs> this one you might know, though. All right. Billboard Dad, It Takes Two, To Grandmother's House We Go, How the West Was Fun. I want to say it's To Grandmother's House We Go. Is that a, are you asking or are you telling me? Hold on. Give me the options again. <laughs> Billboard Dad, It Takes Two, To Grandmother's House We Go, How the West Was Fun. I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with my gut. Okay, well, that is correct. Well done. Good, because I would have went with this takes two, which that, I think that is was the, my other, which uh, I think is the first theatrical one. These are all home. Yeah, all a lot. Of, yeah, like 
75 percent were home, home release. release. By the way, this is why they don't have to work anymore. But they are well because also they life. they use that money to go into fashion and right. then, just, then they just, stayed there. Yeah, it's just <laughs> they're interesting people. That's why they're making their little sister now. do all the work. Yeah, now yeah now her sister has to be the actor because she didn't grow up doing that. <laughs> right. I think so she was in like an episode. Life. Yeah. We, she got the creds. You have to get the creds right, in the episodes. I think she was in an episode yeah. to a full house. Are she you was, ready? Yes, yes. Who was the butler on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Jeffrey. Well done. Yeah. Do you know how it was spelled? With a G. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Well done. It's that fancy G. A <laughs> G. You ready? Yeah. What? Eight film Tom Cruise franchise started out in the 90s. Oh, that, I don't need this. Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah, there's only one eight film <laughs> that he's done. It's yeah, it's he's still doing. Were Jack Reacher. Probably like ten films by now. Yeah. Uh, Taken, which he's not doing. Taken. No, he didn't. And Underworld. Taken. And Jack Reacher only had one uh, that he did. The, one or two. I think he did two Jack Reachers. But yeah, Mission Impossible. Yeah. All right. Scotty? He either did the one Jack Reacher or he did two of the other one. Because I know he did two like Jack Reacher type guys. Yeah. I think it's They're the all one. the same type of people. Yeah, they are basically. Yeah. Which is not considered a grunge band. This is fun. I enjoy this question for you. Oh, I love it. Pearl Jam. It's my favorite grunge <laughs> band. So no. Soundgarden. <laughs> grunge band. I don't know this. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to. I think it might have to. It's. N I R A N A, but I feel like it might have been Nirvana, and they missed the V. Probably that because I don't know a band N I R A N A. Nirvana. <laughs> so we're gonna say Nirvana. All right. Yeah. Matchbox that's Twenty. Right. Matchbox yeah. Twenty. They're from Orlando. Okay. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. And uh, they're Thanks. actually uh, the they're actually a band came out of another band, much like Pearl Jam, except without death, and. Um, the lead singer and the guitarist uh, were in an earlier band called Tabitha Secret, and when they didn't, they had one release out, and they got dropped by the label. They broke up, and they made Bad Trucks Twenty. And here we are with our Rain Man, Caleb. <laughs> yes. Who played Cher in Clueless? I'm gonna now. I am gonna need. Do you need them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stacy Dash, Reese Witherspoon. Brittany Murphy, Alicia Silverstone. The only person I know that was in that I know of, uh, I'm gonna go with. Gonna go with Reese. I have not watched Clueless. Uh, so, so you're who, going with Reese Witherspoon? Who you like, going with? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, can I give you the correct answer? Yeah, give me the correct <laughs> yeah, one. You can. It's the uh, Alicia Silverstone. Uh, okay. Which yeah, I, I Clueless that. is one that I'm, I'm... Clueless we need to do on the t- podcast, yeah. actually. I, think I clu- really like yeah. Clueless. I think we should do uh, Clueless. Clueless is great. Reese Witherspoon was in Legally Blonde. That's it, yeah. That, is it, which is also very similar. Which is also surprisingly good. It yeah. is very good. I really like Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde, both like, And both I like the musical. Really yeah. I really like the musical. Yeah, that was fun, too. Yeah, so. I enjoyed that. All right, Scotty? Yes. Which of these is not an original Beanie Baby? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Patty the platypus, chocolate the moose, legs the frog, or happy the hippo. I don't know this one. Um, I will go with the Patty the platypus. It is happy the hippo. hippo. Mm. I kn- I knew chocolate the moose was a real. I knew one yeah, chocolate the moose sounds like a because I, I that I, sounds like a this is a cute name. Yeah, you ready? So yeah. far, we are both down one. All right. Which was the last Harry Potter book released in the 90s? In the night. Ready? In the United States or in, ca- I in mean the UK? It's, I yeah. T- that's uh, that's <laughs> I, this, this game's from the USA, so let's say the okay, USA. Okay, so we'll say U.S. I like that you asked that question because... I don't know that other like they were released pretty close. So. Uh, yeah, right. So I just He'd be yeah, like, I don't know. there's three weeks difference, <laughs> yeah. so I need it's to true. know. Yeah. Right. So they were all so released in be, July, so it right, doesn't right. matter. Yeah. Like, like the UK one could have been in 1999, and then the the one in the US could have been like 2000. Yeah, no, like it, it just missed it. Just no, missed it. They were released <laughs> in July. Yeah. So. so the options you have from the books are Prisoner of Azkaban, Chamber of Secrets, Goblet of Fire, or Order of the Phoenix. I want to say it's pretty early. Because I think they started in the late, well, I think they started in the mid-90s. So I want to say, 
Give, g- give me one more time, just so I can. Prisoner of Azkaban, mm-hmm. Chamber of Secrets, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix. I'm gonna. G- I'm gonna go with pr- Prisoner of Azkaban. What number is that? That would be three. Thank you. That is correct. That was my guess. And yeah, because it has to be it has early. It has to be early. Yeah. It could have been that our chamber, chamber of secrets. Well done. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Like I can get to that number after that. And I don't because I think that's the last that's, movie. That's last about as high as we went. We, yeah. The last movie I saw. Okay. So I think yeah. we because sh- Goblet of Fire is the next one, and it like I oh, felt you know that what? felt like a two thousand. Steph's not here, but let's go ahead and discuss that real quick. Yeah. Maybe, okay. maybe maybe the podcast can can help us okay. decide this. So I'm thinking about next season. All right, because we're getting we, we're about. F- Four more episodes, four more movies before we're done uh, for t- this season. Mm-hmm. And uh, a while back, years ago, Steph, uh, J- Justine and I started a podcast where we were trying, because she would not seen the Star Wars films, and I hadn't seen most of the Harry Potter stuff. And but what was really fascinating about it is we did it in order. Right. So we did it in, in, in um, Chronological episode order. of order, not release order. Not release order. Yeah. yeah. So I started Star Wars in a weird way. People. Right, right. Which, which is what I think Scotty is, does to me. I think it's also the correct way, for, but for ep- for Star Wars, I think Star Wars you should start episode one and go through the story. That, I'm chronological as well. Yeah, I'm chronological. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a. I'm also. I'm definitely against the machete order. <laughs> but I, the machete order is to like <laughs> prevent like the plot twist from revealing too soon for each one, and it's like no, 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 no it doesn't fine. matter. It, you're fine. You're fine. But, but that's the thing is like when we went through it, and this might be extra, but. I did. I wasn't aware of things that you were known. Well, like yeah. they didn't approach it the same way. Like when we were watching them, it was just fascinating because like we would be watching it and talk about it afterwards because right. that's what we did. Yeah. And we watched it together and then we talked about it. So they yeah. were late nights. Um, but I just I was like, he seems like he might be a bad guy. People look at him like he's a bad guy, but I don't know what he's done. Yeah. I, I mean, so I wa- like, I technically mostly watched. In release order, growing because I watched episode one first. That's yeah, because because that's how I was you were introduced. little when it came out, right? That's how yeah. I was introduced. Yeah, and so I watched it on VHS a bunch, and that's how I watched it. And then I watched four, five, and six after because I got those right. on VHS. And then and now that two was my first. Now we've theatrical. got the sequel trilogy out. And we've got some so yeah. um and so and some good shows. So I I, I think I wanted to, and if the audience thinks this is a good idea, I think we should do next season. I think we should do Star Wars and Harry Potter again. And I would, I would skip the cult meetings this next season. Though I would do. It would have to be. Well, it would have to. Would have to. And yeah. so we could, we could have like a mini. You know, if there's something important to talk about, we'd talk about it. But I think we do Star Wars, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Harry Potter for the for the run. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. So let us know your thoughts. Let us know your thoughts on that, and then um, we'll uh, we'll try again. Anyway, sorry. We're next on, question. We're on Scotty. Yep. So. Th- this is going to be the fifth question for each of you, so this is the last question. All right. Okay. And we are tied. I believe so. <laughs> yeah, we're tied. But the tiebreaker yeah. is that I uh, stole your question. <laughs> yeah. Because I knew the answer to the clueless one. Yeah. So you don't we get to deter. <laughs> Guys, this is my game. <laughs> Hush your faces. All right, Scotty. Yes. Michael Jordan led the Bulls to how many championships in the 90s? The options are as follows. Please. Six, four, Seven or five? Four. The answer is six. Six. Ugh, I know he did it a lot. Right, I, I kept going like two of them All were like right. in the two th- early 2000s. had to be, but yeah. For the win. What year was Google founded? Would you like the year options? Yes, please. 95, 97, 98, 99. I'll go 97. The answer is 98. <sighs> All right. So now we're going to have a bonus round, okay? Tiebreaker. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep. Not this one, because that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to do this one. We've done this question before. Right? Okay. So I'm going to see so if you guys remember. So this is a pay, paying attention game. So I'm going to say it. You, nobody can answer until I get through reading the question, <laughs> all of the options. Oh, and then you're killing me, has, Smalls. And then whoever has the answer says it first. Okay. Kay? Okay. Tamagotchi is a Japanese blending of what two words? A, egg and watch. B, computer and pet. C, Pet and got you? D, egg and computer. Egg and watch. Egg and watch, yeah. 
He said it very fast. Yeah, he got it first. He did. Well done. I had forgotten the answer to that. So I well remembered done. it. Yep. The one that I went past was, what sitcom was Steve Urkel on? <laughs> Family Matters. Family Matters, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I saw Steve Urkel. I was like, no, we're not doing that one. <laughs> no, no. I was fun. Yeah. And we learned a lot. And now, have you been able to silence the lambs? <laughs> Clarice. Clarice. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're a lot to talk about. Um, this is going to be a fun episode. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, gather round. Present. Woo. Meet Clary Starling. She's an FBI agent in training who's just been plucked up by the head of behavioral science, Jack Crawford, to help with a project involving serial killers. Jack wants her to meet Dr. Hannibal Lecter to get him to fill out a questionnaire in hopes that to answer uh, his answers will help uh, solve future cases. She agrees to meet with the serial killer Lecter. Also known as Hannibal the Cannibal because he eats people. Hannibal mm. the Cannibal. Uh, when meeting with Lecter, he is cordial but unnerving and isn't interested in the questionnaire. He is more interested in her and the current serial killer sensation in the country, Buffalo Bill. After some unpleasantness and a conversation on how he killed a census taker, I can't do that. Can you? Anyone? <laughs> He offers to help to solve the Buffalo Bills case by giving her a clue on in a storage unit. Meet James Gum, a guy with a funny voice and an interest in women's skins. Uh, he kidnaps a woman, turns her, uh, who turns out to be the daughter of a U.S. senator. He throws her in a well at the bottom of the ba- of his basement and torments her. It rubs a lotion on the skin. You did it almost in the right sound. Tone. <laughs> and z- unless it gets the yes, player pressures, it gets those. Again. That is so unnerving. <laughs> we'll get to it. Inside the storage unit, uh, she finds the head of Benjamin Raspell, Buffalo Bill's first victim. And now the FBI knows where the, there's a connection between Bill and Lecter. And Crawford agrees to get Starling to give the doctor an offer uh, to transfer to another facility with perks, such as walking on the beach. Must be nice. Must be nice. Uh, too bad the offer isn't good. It's not even real. Lecter's own psychi- psychiatrist, Dr. Chilton, has been secretly taping Lecter and Clarice's meetings and discovers the fake offer with the senator's daughter in jeopardy. Cl- uh, Chilton contacts the senator, and now the deal is real, and Crawford and Starling are in trouble. Lecter is transferred to, to Memphis, where he gives details and the name of Buffalo Bill. He is placed in a special constructed cell and guarded by a SWAT team and local Memphis police. Starling visits him and, uh, and knows, uh, because she knows he isn't telling the entire truth. Lecter gets her to confess some childhood trauma uh, that happened when her, after her father died. He gives her the case file he's been working on before Starling is escorted out by the police. Lecter then works on what we will say his gruesome escape. Trust me, you need to see it. <coughs> He it flees was very, Mem- uh, oh. It was very beautiful. <laughs> it is mm. it's very artistic. He flees Memphis in a stolen ambulance and isn't seen from again. Clarence looks for the case file with Lecter. Help realize that Buffalo Bill knew his first uh, victim. She heads out to the victim's hometown where she interviews people who currently who knew her and leads her to the house of a lady of uh, of the of the, who the victim did some sewing jobs for. It's currently occupied by James Gum, Buffalo Bill himself. Starling realizes uh, she is with a serial killer, tries to arrest him, and he leads her on a chase into his basement. She finds the sinner's daughter, but the killer shuts off the lights using night vision goggles to track her down. She hears him behind him and turns and shoots the killer dead. All is saved. Uh, Clarice graduates from the FBI and gets a call from Lecter, who's at a tropical island and hunting. Dr. With Chilton. Long hair. Well, he he's gonna have him for dinner. He's gonna have old, he's gonna have an old friend for dinner. Yeah. Credits. So let's talk about this film. Whew. Well, uh, so so very different than Manhunter. Let's just let's yeah. just stay yeah, there. Okay, so let's continue the conversation we were gonna have um, last week. Yeah, right. Last week. Okay, so I watched Manhunter. I'm gonna say begrudgingly, like I, I felt begrudgingly. After I was done. To be fair, you begrudgingly watched to be all the movies. This one hundred percent. But I watched this one. Now, this is a movie that I have always been meaning to watch in its entirety. Um, but I have watched different. S- I've seen the his scene where he escapes. I've seen that because uh, <laughs> it's it, it has a lot of. There's a lot of stuff in it that's very important. There's a lot of stuff going on. Oh yeah. Um, like the interview with him the way that he's in the shadows and comes into the light, things like that. Uh, so I've, I've watched those scenes, but I have not watched the whole thing. So I, I had a context of what was going on um, in terms of the storyline. Right. So I wasn't clueless to the story. 
Uh, now, having had watched it all together, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And to the point where it's like, all right, we're going to watch the next one. And then I waited because I wasn't for sure if that was something we were doing on the podcast. And I, I like to watch them because I haven't seen them pretty close to when we talk about it. Right. So it's fresh mm-hmm. because it right. it would be fresh. Um, but I did start the show Hannibal <laughs> because I have an itch now that must be scratched on the skin on my body. Right. That no one's taken from me. Anyway, so I started that and it starts hyper focused on Graham. Right. Uh, like the Manhunter. The yeah, mo- the entire show, show is, is Graham and, Graham and okay. Lecter. Yeah. So, uh which is good to know. Um it, I think they, this show does so I think this show does what Manhunter was trying to do. And because Graham is such a unique quirky person in the way that he thinks and approaches so things. So I I'm I'm I'll be real excited when you see season 3. Yeah. Okay. Cuz season 3 is Red Dragon. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so Red Dragon's been made three times. It's made Manhunter, it's made the the remake uh, with Anthony Hopkins as Lecter in Red Dragon, and then they did it on the sh- the show Hannibal in season three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so far, now I'm only a couple episodes into season one, so I haven't watched very much of it, but so far I thoroughly enjoy the show as well. I think they did a fabulous job of, like, it makes you uncomfortable, but at the same time, like, you want to see what happens next. It's but the way that they set up his oddities in it, I think, is what they were trying to accomplish in Manhunter, and it just like you can tell with the lights. I don't know if you could tell as much with how the light changed in Manhunter, because mm-hmm. um, you had a lot of pinks in some of yeah. them. Yeah. But you you watched as like the darkness, if you will, faded when he was able to to solve something hanging over him. Like I get what they were doing. Right. It just was. It was so drastic and overdone to me that it was just cheesy oh yeah again like, again like we said last week uh manhunter is a 1980s rock music video in a serial killer movie it's, they tried yeah you know, like that's when michael mann especially in that yeah. era michael mann um but hannibal so far been really good yeah yeah uh, the yeah. show yeah, hannibal's great hannibal's yeah. great um i i am fascinated by this movie on a couple of levels um I think Jodie Foster is absolutely brilliant in this thing. I love mm-hmm. her like, as that person. Like, uh, and it, she wins an Academy Award for this this role, as she should. And it's it's one of the things that it's she's not playing it ham fisted. I mean, she is. I mean, she's just. I believe that she is a naive, but smart, young trainee. In a situation, I, yeah. b- I buy every bit of it. Yep. it looks, Minus her West Virginia accent. <laughs> it, but it, it looks so. I mean, I I don't know what accent she was trying to have. She, so West, West Virginia. Virginia. She's from West I, Virginia. I just assumed she was from the South. Well, they say West Virginia in the film. Oh well, yeah. I just discounted that because she's from Texas. It's fine. Um, but it's her character just was so believable. Mm-hmm. Like you, you connected with her so much because it felt real and like her, instantly because you like, like you, I mean, the opening credits is her running through a. Oh yeah, Force. I was watching yeah. it and the whole time I was like, I I have yet to do something like that. And you're like, I want to totally do I this. seriously out loud was like, I really want to do an obstacle course <laughs> because I want to see how I would do cuz I have a problem. Um, <laughs> and then Jennifer's like, let's go find you a place. But you see her She's a supportive derby wife. Yeah. She is. Uh you see her athleticism mm-hmm. in points like that, but you also see like she has a different way that she approaches things when she's professional. Mm-hmm. Like she looks different. I don't like it when she dresses professional. Like to me, I, it ages her a lot, which it might be the point. I think it is the point. Yeah. But then you see her looking when she's talking to like her classmates, and she's dressed differently. Like it, she's more it casual. It feels like you can tell that she has that night nativity, 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 whatever. Nativity. Yeah. She's, she's naive. very naive. Like she's yeah, very naivety. young. And so, like, you can tell that she intellectually and physically is growing, mm-hmm. but she's still learning. Like, mm-hmm. she's still, she's not there yet. And I, so, it's, it's I, interesting. I think the dressing up, though, is because she wants, whenever she's trying to be professional, is to match her peers. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not, like, I don't, dis- yeah. I don't think it was a bad move. No. I just found her more approachable. Like, I enjoyed the way that she appeared when yeah. she was hanging out with friends because it felt... It felt real. Yeah. It just felt very Because while, while the film never outright states it, this is a feminist story because it's like they call her, they make it clear that she is a woman a few times in the film. And then like, well, but they never outright say anything 
I mean, they kind of do. They because uh, they when they call for him, it's like, oh, so he sent a woman this time because yeah. he thinks if they send an attractive woman, mm-hmm. Hannibal will talk. Because oh, well, what's the line? Is I don't think he's seen a woman in yeah. eight years. But it's never yeah. like an outright like, oh, this is a feminist statement. Like right. it's very and, like. Uh, and look, and she's not dressing sexy or anything for no. him. She's just you know she's professional, which probably would be you know the psychiatrist's bag anyway. So yeah. Well, I think once again, that's just her trying to match her peers. Because no, no, she absolutely. Knows. I, cause, right. because, yeah. because well, she she's not aware of the agenda. Like Crawford sends her sends her in there for to, the Buffalo to, Bill. to solve the help help with the Buffalo Bill case, like he did with the Tooth Fairy case. Yep. You know, he's he's good at this. And then the the um, the Shrake the sh- the case in the um, first season of Ma- Hannibal. Yeah, which is talked about in Red Dragon. Hmm. So that's what they're working on when Will Graham gets attacked. Yeah, and so. Uh, in Red Dragon, and, th- and so yeah. Yeah. anyway, uh, so they're like he's 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 a excellent profiler. He's probably one of the best profilers we got. Too bad he's crazy, and, and he's crazy because he can get into the mind of a crazy. Player. Right, right. He's just crazy. And the person and the problem with Crawford going there himself is he knows that Hannibal will get in his head. Well, also Crawford is his arch enemy. Craw- yeah. Crawford's the one who's yeah because they, they isn't Crawford the one at the end that he follows? No, no Chilton is it's Chilton. Chilton. Chilton's the one that was over the prison. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah he's the psychiatrist. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. a psychiatrist. Yeah, because he got that nice deal, that fancy deal. So, so Chilton, mm-hmm. Chilton is that psychiatrist who failed upwards. Yeah, he's not a very good one, but he's landed a, like a cushy job in front of a in charge of a. And now he's got an even cushier job. Right, and so he's <laughs> like, he's like for now, for now, yeah. Um, you know, he's the, you know, he failed upwards, and so he thinks he's. Superior to Hamil- Hannibal, and Hannibal's like, I'm, I'm way smarter. I've already yeah. figured you out. Well, I was yeah. just locked in a cage, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured that's the same situation. The dude wore somebody else's face. <laughs> like, to escape, he literally <laughs> he wore, wore somebody another, else's uh, face. That it, that, mm. yeah. Okay, can you imagine yourself in a place where you're like, I have to escape. The only way I can do it is to take somebody's face off of their face and put it on my face. And no one figuring it yeah, out no because one. when they get close to figuring it out, he fakes the seizure. Yep, which is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> but like to be in a place where I, I get it, he's like a serious, like he has problems. But not only to have the thought, like sure, you can have the thought, I could fake this person, but then to do the action and then put their face on your face, yeah. mm-hmm. it's just that would be hard to even pretend to do. Like, as an actor, that would be very difficult to wear something knowing it's imitating somebody's face. So, th- there are two points in the movie that, that mirror each other um, or allude to each other that I find fascinating. When Chilton is walking Clarice down to see Lecter, he's given her the rules. Mm-hmm. And he says, the reason why we have this rules is because once we remove the strengths, he killed a nurse. And his blood... his um, his pulse never got above 80, 85. Yeah. And then when we see him as escape, when he's beating the... You hear that. His yeah, pulse they, is 80. No, he's not... Like, he's, he's not... He's calm. He's yeah. calm. Yeah. He's beating a guy to death as physically calm as he yeah. as possibly be. His body's almost relaxed as he's easily beating the ever-living well, shit out well, of the Well, and then guy. we hear yeah. his pulse in the ambulance. Right, right. Yeah, you find out like yeah, he's 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 fine. He's post you know he's post yeah. this uh, seizure. He'll be you know we're getting getting there. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. Brilliant escape. Well done, be- man. Best version of Chilton though that I. Yeah, he's still the best. I, I like um in Hannibal. I like him in Hannibal too, but um, he's more of a character in, ha- in Hannibal the show. Yeah. But, um, well, that's because they got TV time. They, they got, got TV time. They, they got, got that. We can make a full. You know, I can't. You have to look up his name. I can't think of the guy's name because he. I liked him because he was in that uh, the musical version of Leap of Faith. I was oh, trying yeah. to see on Broadway that got um, uh, canceled before I. Um, oh. Right before, like I had tickets to go to uh, um, New York to see it. Uh, Raul Esparza. Yeah, Raul Esparza. Who's he's great in it. Yeah. Um. There's a. There, this movie has a lot going for it. I like I like Jimmy uh, Jonathan Demi's choice of shots. There's a lot of mm-hmm. close ups. Like unnerving close-ups. The to see inside who you are. Yeah, the mm-hmm. um, the shots were like when she's explaining the lambs story. It's it's her in just full close-up, right. and then it cuts to him and just it's not quite close-up, but it's like it's like between a close-up and a cowboy shot. It's just a and he's just menacing. It's and then back to her. He's just mm. this type close close-up. It's just fascinating work. Yeah. Also. Um, uh, this will be in the trivia, but the, he shot her differently than he shot everyone else, so we could force the perspective around. 
Okay. And so I'll, well, we'll get into that when we get into the trivia, but I thought it was that was real neat, too. Um, there's, I mean, we haven't t- touched on James Gum yet. The no, I mean, I was just Ted Levine about it. is so oh, Ted Levine's great in this. Just, just. Okay, listen. Sure. Speaking of him, I did not know that when Jay and Silent Bob do that bit in Clerks, that it was from <laughs> this movie. Right, because right. Because that is a scene I have never yeah. watched. Right, right. So it came on. I was like, I uh, know good, this. The Goodbye Horses bit. Like yeah. he was. Saying all the things, I was like, I know this, and then he bent down. I was like, Is he talking? I'd fuck me. And then he 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 leaned back, and I was like, This is Clerks, right? Yeah. And you know, Derby Wife was like, Well, that's where they got it from. And I was like, I didn't know that. Like it's just (laughs) this is one of the. This is why I watch movies with you. This is why. And it's interesting because you you mentioned that you've seen scenes from this movie before. It's interesting that this is not one because this is a very cultural osmosis scene that's been throughout. Well. But it is interesting seeing that perspective. Yeah, I mean, and and like the the movie got criticized at, at its at its time uh, from from um, like our toy Bob. Well, from the trans community. Yeah, because because of, of their it did, showed them in a negative. Because right. it almost yeah, because it almost right. does. Uh, well, because because you know, uh, tr- tr- trans people over the course of cinematic history have always been. It's the trope of the. Crazy crossdresser or the mm-hmm. crazy man who wants to be a woman, they're, but they're always crazy. Like they're always a serial killer or a criminal or something. Yeah. There's always something uh, something up with it. And I think this movie, while not perfect in that area, makes it absolutely clear that regardless of what this guy is doing, he is not a transsexual. He's something else, and he's wrongly going at think wrongly thinking that he's trying to be a he's trying to transform much like the tooth fairy ki- killer who the tooth fairy was trying to turn into a dragon he was trying to be this dragon almost this god being. right right james gum hasn't figured out what he wants to to transform into he, he just likes the yeah. skin of the well, ladies but but i think i think that's his i don't think i think he, even if they never caught him he would still kill because he. Yeah. It wouldn't make him happy. Because well, Demi, it, happiness yeah. is not for him becoming a woman. It's him becoming something else. And I don't think, I think logically for him, it's like, oh, I'm a guy. I feel weird. My, I should be yeah. a woman. I, I don't think it's like he's actually a transsexual. I think he's some. He's like trying to be something he's else. Just trying yeah. to find himself. I, right. Yeah. Because I did find himself. He leans over to this. Yeah. I did some reading because I was I was interested in that subject of how the how it was perceived and the perception. And Demi came out and was like, no, it's not that. It's He's a man who wants to change. Like you said, he doesn't know what he wants to change into, but he doesn't want to be what he is right now. So what's the furthest thing from being a man? And, uh, and, the, and, the and book, that's what you know and the book, Thomas Harris's book does the same because, you know, the book came out 87, I want to say. So it came out, comes out 88. 88. So, it's so a, still, yeah. eight, eight years after Man, um, Red Dragon. Yeah. And uh, and mainly wrote because he was like he needed some cash, and so he wrote up another book. But um, and then the other ones are he makes bec- he writes because the movie studios pressure him to do yeah. it. Um, this Although he also wrote the script for the worst of them. <laughs> um, Hannibal comes out, but he doesn't want to make Han- he doesn't want to write Hannibal. But the studio's like, we need to make a sequel to Science of the Lambs, and so he's like, fine. Uh, and they pay him a lot of money to write the book. Yeah. And he writes the book, but he writes it like in a way that it's unfilmable, like disgusting, and like. They offered to Jonathan Demi, and Demi's like, "Yeah, I'm not doing this. This is terrible." I offered to jo- Jodie Foster to come back. Nope, <laughs> it's disgusting. We're not going to do it. And so, and so it, it it gets on hold for another two years until they find people. So Ridley Scott takes over, um, which get, also creates the timeline. Bi- it's a huge gap between right, movies, right? And then Julianne Moore comes in and plays Clarice in it. And so, yeah, but and then who is Julianne Moore is a. F- Wonderful actress. Yeah, because we were we were talking she about is, that. She is an, also an Oscar winning as- actress. She is not a Clary Starling. <laughs> I don't feel like you can replace Clary. You, it's hard to re- yeah. Jodie Foster. And they've uh, now officially t- tried twice. They tried twice with the, the Clary's t- TV show, which we found out is on freebie. If you want to try to watch that, I watched the first couple episodes. I couldn't get into it uh, mainly because um, she, you know again she's from West Virginia, and famously I went to school in West Virginia. And there's at the end of the first episode, she's she gives a press conference where she's she says she's uh, grew up in the Kanawha County, West Virginia. Yep. And having lived in Kanawha County, it's not how you say Kanawha. <laughs> and like, and there's a poor Australian actress, and I'm like, this poor Australian actress should have did some research. 
Yeah. yeah. Or at least somebody on the writing it's team should have. Well, I feel bad. It's, it's like how I feel when I watch movies that happen in Mobile and they're like, it's Mobile, Alabama. And I'm like, no Mo- one's called. Or Mobile. Mobile. Yeah. yeah, it's like, no I'm one calls it. Mobile. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's Mobile. <laughs> mobile. <laughs> like a phone. Uh, it drives me nuts. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I I think um, Ted Levine's amazing in this movie. As as I mean, he is frightful. Yep. In this, even like when he gets when he does the Ted Bundy thing, when he when he with the van with the van and the the couch was that's how Ted Bundy got one of his victims. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's you know, can you help me out here? Yeah. And it's like, can you be the one to get in the van? Can you get in the van? And I'm like, no, Catherine, no. don't get in the van. And I've seen this movie a lot. I'm always like, don't get in the van, baby. Like, don't get in the van. Like, I feel like if somebody's like asked me to are help you? them and they want me to get into their vehicle, yeah. to, to, nope, I'm done. Are you I'm, about I'm, a size 14? <laughs> I'm like, nope. What? It's like, no, you you get in your vehicle. I'll help you from the outside if you really need help. <laughs> Um, I I want also want to talk about the storage unit. Oh yeah. So when uh, so in the first in the first meeting between Lecter and Clarice, it gets um it's cordial at the beginning and then she screws it up basically, yeah. because she just wants to because she, she goes to the what she needs right and all she needs is this questionnaire and which is not what she needs and she doesn't know it she's because she's bait. Whereas Hannibal knows what she needs, right? And he's just like, no, give ask me what you need, not this. You're right, right. She's and like, no, that's. And that's what I need. And then he's like, and it's it's funny where like, she's not even aware what she needs, and he's already figured her which out. Is, which like is he true knows most people. Most people don't know what they need. Right, but he <laughs> but being the psychiatrist, he's like, oh oh, this is all about Buffalo Bill. That's why he asks the questions, and then uh, he sends her on the way. Fly fly, little star- starling, fly fly, and then of course multiple Megs does what he does. Yeah, um, which was gross. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I cut my wrist. No, you're not. That's not. And then it pisses Hannibal off because one thing that we learned over the course of like everything is that um, he detests rudeness. And like you find out in Hannibal uh, that a lot of the victims that he killed was just because they were rude to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean he's he seems like a decent guy. Mm-hmm. But he, he just eats people. <laughs> also, he needs to restock the fridge. You know, problems. There's been a, again. I'm only two to three yeah. episodes in. I don't know for sure how many. I can't remember. But every time he's eating, I'm like, that's a person. Mm-hmm. Which is what you're supposed to. Fe- it's what you're supposed serving to serving it to somebody and, else. And Every time he's eating in that show, he's feeding somebody else. And the way that the cooking is shown in that show, like the way that we see the prep time, really makes that show. Well, they got they hired a professional chef. Um, one of the celebrity chefs. I can't remember his name. He does he does the food on that show. Yeah, and like we and we see the process of it, right. which is what makes it. So much better. And like he goes to Graham's room and they're eating eggs and what looks like fingers, but it's sausage. Right. And you're like, that might be a finger. <laughs> this was so good about it, right? Well, it's <laughs> apparently, I guess it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, I, so far with the show. So, um, I don't know if this is a spot you were going to ask it, but we had mentioned before the three Hannibals. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. Talk about okay. It. Uh, because I've seen Manhunter. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen. Han- or Silence of the Yeah, Silence of the Limbs, thank you. And then the show Hannibal. Uh, so my struggle with the show Hannibal is the person that plays uh, Lecter in that is the bad guy from Harry Potter. And I struggle oh, with Mads, that. Oh, Mads, yeah. Because yeah, he's already dead to me. Like, he showed up and I was like, villain right there. That's a bad guy. He's not good. And then it turns out to be Hannibal Lecter. And, of course, I already know right. who yeah. he is. Like, if you were someone if more naive than me in life, and you just watched the show Hannibal, not having had seen anything else, it would be really fascinating to watch their perspective. Sure, I to know if they can figure out. They that would he's also a bad guy. they would also have to have avoid a lot of cultural osmosis because I think Hannibal the Cannibal is, as a like rhyme is just it's you'd, entered the. You find them though. Yeah, There's you can find them. There. You can I find mean, them. We found you. Yeah, right. Exactly. You, uh, yeah. I don't know for sure if I hadn't watched pieces of it in school that mm-hmm. I would be as aware of it. Right. Just yeah. because if if it's outside of your thoughts or your yeah maybe yeah your processing you don't realize or you don't connect it or you weren't around when the movies were popular and they call him Doctor Lecter yeah so they don't necessarily focus on Hannibal so much right um so it would just be really fascinating to get that sort of perspective I guess that's what you guys do to me but. Now I want to watch somebody else do it to see if see, they recognize yeah. the uncomfortable. Because th- there's something about him that's uncomfortable. And, and the cycle continues. Yeah. <laughs> but and we, but we, we know do it as what a podcast. it is. I'll produce it. Watch, yeah. it, watch you and someone else. 
Ted Cow be like, I'll I'll host this. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch. Let's watch the show together. Well, and also, the show is interesting because it's a prequel, so you're getting like like the yeah. No, I really love that part because you're getting to know him before. Because the first you know the other two aspects. seasons are a prequel, and then three is Red Dragon, I think. And the thing is about, I mean, in the show, Hannibal's likable. Yeah. You. Yeah, well, he's not well, because you you start to root for this friendship between Will and ha- and right. Lecter, and then it's gonna you, and except for when he used the phone to to tip off the guy. Yeah. But you know what's gonna oh, fall apart though, oh. and, yeah. and so it's like, it, so is it? It's a love hate. Yeah. yeah. And then of course if you're and of course if you were Tumblr when the show was airing, not they only were you weren't yeah, you weren't just rooting <laughs> for shipped, friendship. <laughs> they just they shipped them. Like, Where are they going? Fuck, because that's, that's what I wanted them to do. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know if Will Graham's are capable of that. I mean, because Will Graham in the show is clearly on the spectrum. Well, also Brian Fuller as a sh- as a showrunner tends to be like he feeds like the the, the God lo- he feeds God the Tumblr Brian audience, Fuller. but he never fully God goes God through Brian with it. <laughs> but um, but Graham is on the spectrum for cle- sure. Clearly on the yeah. spectrum, and like Hugh Dancy is so good. But. Peterson's Will Graham's also yeah. can, be, but that was before the spectrum was like being yeah. discussed as a thing. Ed really. Norton's the only one that's like the odd one out. In yeah, Ed, terms Ed, of that. Ed, I don't, I don't dislike Ed Norton's, but he's my least favorite of the three. If that makes sense. Yeah, and like, like, but as we learned in Manhunter, Peterson didn't want the role anyway, so he's just there for. I mean, he he's a good actor. He's going to do what he's, his job is. That's a Will Graham. Yeah, oh, that yeah, one and he's going to do his job, but. You clearly can tell he's like not comfortable on set. He was, anyway. he was checking the boxes, and so, but he's, but like, I don't think he wanted to be there, and you could see that yeah. in the perform- which makes the performance better, I think, because <laughs> um, he didn't want to be, be there. there and like so he got drugged from his home. While right. we're on the Will Graham of it all, oh, uh, before we get, oh to the yeah, Will go Graham, ahead. I, I wanted to talk about the, we were yeah, talking about yeah, the three yeah, Hannibals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three Hannibals. So, um, in research of this, I was listening to another podcast, uh, one I love called Blank Check. Mm-hmm. And Blank Check, what they do is they take a specific director and they go through all of their films every episode of a specific. And the, so they did they did Jonathan Demme. And so Silence of Lambs is one of his films. And so there's a great episode of Silence of the Lambs. And uh, their guest is um, uh, a trans woman. And so they were, that's where they really got the discussion oh, about the, the transsexual right. of it all and everything. But what got brought up, it was the three Hannibals. And I found this fascinating. So you've got Brian Cox, Anthony... Uh, da- uh, Hopkins. I keep wanting to say Daniels. That's three C three PO, and uh, you get uh, Mads Mikkelsen. And in the books, at times he is described. Hannibal's described as a man, a monster, and a demon. And then they were like, "Well, Brian Cox is the man. Mm-hmm. Anthony Hopkins is the monster. Mads Mikkelsen is the demon." And that's all I can see now. I, yep. I cannot unsee that's in my brain now. And so, hmm. I mean, the demon is seductive. And yeah. like, like Anthony Hopkins Lecter is cordial, but you know that man will kill you. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, because they bring and up Nicholson will yeah. seduce you before he kills you. Well, because they bring up every time in the in. I mean, all three of them are dangerous, but it's like every time in Silence that they're talking about him, they're like, "Oh, he's a monster, right, right. And, and, and like incapable of but describing." But Manhunter him. Brian Cox is a man. Yeah. And he bases his performances on, performance on a serial killer who is also a man. And like Hopkins is literally leaning into the monster role of it. Yep. Like, even Anthony, his like rapping, like his bondage, right? An- appears. A- Anthony Hopkins is literally playing Dracula. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the performance he's playing Dracula. Well, yeah, because there's that whole line of, "Is he a vampire?" Well, well not even that. <laughs> Which, but like, yeah. Like when you when you see and the him, way he uh, like when Clary's first sees him, he's just standing yeah. still. Like no. in the middle of his cell. Right. No, oh, it doesn't. Monsters shit. do that. That's yeah. Monsters and then the next time, that. next time the lights are out right. and he's so like I I can't un that I heard that Friday. That's what I was listening to during my infusion I talked about last week. Uh, I was listening to that for research and I was like I just could not get that out of my head. That's hundred percent right. Like yeah, you know he you know uh, Brian Cox is playing the serial killer that he researched. Anthony Hopkins decided he wanted to be Dracula and played. And Dracula, and it works. It just works. Yeah. And, and then, of course, it's funny that that podcast went over his library, Demi's library, because right after is Philadelphia, which is like, yeah, uh, another, another, yeah, <laughs> another classic, another, cl- another classic gets Tom Hanks his Oscar. Demi's a, dr- a good, great director. He's, yeah, uh, rest in peace. He died a few years back. Mm-hmm. Are you uh, about the Will Graham of it all? Yeah. Th- so the Will Graham of it all. So I, I texted you when I was watching this morning. Because I, w- I was looking at little small bits. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the little things since HBO Max. I can pause it and be like, oh, 
here's something and it's high definition. I watched during the newspaper clippings and I was pausing during that just to see if I could catch anything, which back then they didn't do much. Like you don't get a lot well, of Easter back then eggs. There was not, the, all you had was VHS and you pause VHS. It was, it was distorted yeah. anyway. So they did a lot of repeating. Yeah. So that like I would catch, cause I was looking specifically to see if there was any hints of Will Graham, even though I know there, there wouldn't be because the copyrights of how these movies were made is an interesting story all of right. in itself, along with how the shows are made. Uh, there's a reason why Clarice is not a thing in Hannibal show. Sorry. She was supposed to be. She was going to be yeah. in the fourth season. Yeah, but they rights issues. I can explain the rights issue right now, actually. Yeah. So Dino De Laurentiis makes um, Manhunter. He's the producer of Manhunter. He's this Italian guy who buys a lot of... He's a rich Italian. He was a rich Italian guy who bought a bunch of stuff and... He financed it through, or um, through uh, I forgot what the company was. It was his and some other company. And Manhunter flops. You have to understand, Red Dragon was one of the biggest books in history, in literary history. It yeah. Was one of the, like like we just discussed in the, the Manhunter episode, it was one of the first airport airplane airport novels. You know, you'd buy it at right. the airport and read it on. Everybody was reading it, and so that kind of sparked like John Grisham and Clancy. Um, what's the Nancy Clancy? Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, um, the Hunt for October, those those novels and stuff. Yeah, and uh, so so he's Tom I mean, Clancy. Tom Clancy, and he's um, so De Laurentiis, who's Italian, is like you know hey, it'll be a hit, it'll be a great hit, you know, and then uh, it bombs. Russ, because it, it's bomb, it bombs for many reasons, but it, yes, yeah, it bombs, and so he's like, uh, I'm no, I'm not, and so I'm not gonna make any more, and. Uh, Orion bought the the rights to do the book for five hundred thousand dollars from Thomas Harris, but they still had to get the the film rights from uh, De La Rennes, who owned them because of you know, Manhunter, and he just gave them to him. Okay. Because he's like, you not you don't make movie with Hannibal Lecter, you will not make any money. Well, whatever. So he just gave them to him for free, zero. Signs of Lamb becomes this huge hit. Oh God. And so and suddenly. Dino De Laurentiis is back in in the yep. in yeah. the Hannibal Lecter movie. You know, he's he's like, oh, we need to make others, and that he's Big the one sellers regret. Right, right, and so he's <laughs> like, because he still owns the rights, yeah. he gave them for the one movie, but he owns the rights to him. Yeah, and so he didn't like sell them permanently. He just like, hey, you can make this movie. Well, well, now he he owns the rights to Clarice and all this, and so he oh. and so he picks and chooses how well, the family does now since he's dead. Yeah. They pick and choose, but they made Hannibal and they. Made Red Dragon, and then made Hannibal Rising. I think Dino Dinoris dies after that. Yeah, or he dies right. And before. Hannibal Rising is the and only so one where do, Thomas actually wrote part r- of the script. And then Hannibal comes out, and Hannibal is a hit. And they were negotiating. The reason why Hannibal was hit because the Dinoris family does the, the as well is that it's it's basically it's made out of country, mm-hmm. and uh, CB- NBC airs it. Like on Friday nights in the summertime, kind yep. of thing, and so because it's, it's cheap for them to buy and produce, yep. and they're they're not producing it; they're basically just licensing it to show it. Okay, and so it's it's cheap for them to to make, and so, but it but they were like, we're done after the, we're not going to buy anymore in three seasons, so that's why it gets canceled. But the fourth season was always going to be about well, they had just got a deal where they could make put Clarice in it. They it didn't, were, it mm. didn't help they weren't getting views because NBC was doing that thing that TV networks do. Yeah. I know because I was watching during that time and I was getting upset that they were doing it where they don't want to do season four. So to m- drop their viewership and have an excuse to not air more, they were changing the schedule of when the show would air. Yeah, you could never find it. And uh, I mean, I, I looked out and watched it on the website because this is, you know, they were just started doing streaming on their own website. Mm. So, you, so I, don't, I caught it when it aired when it was on the website. Yeah. So, or it would come to Hulu. I think. Yeah, and then of course they can have the excuse of, well, nobody's watching. It's like, right, yeah, because you're moving it. <laughs> right. It's just their f- and they do it on purpose. Yeah. Because studios, it's a network studio, thing. Network studios, the whole thing, are just they're, they're evil. Um, and so, seriously, there's worse worse things out there. Yeah. And we, like we celebrate the movies, but hate the studios. <laughs> well, yeah, they're yeah. all awful. Pro writers, let's so, go. Th- and so that's why. And then Clarice gets her own show, which is terrible on CBS. So they didn't let Clarice go to season four, but they gave her her own show. They did but her but own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and then that show came out a few and, years and later. And then the show isn't even, it's not an adaptation of Silence because it's I'm after. assuming more rights issues probably somewhere. No, because they're not, yeah, they're not doing it because they've got Silence and they don't want to mess with it. So they do, uh, it's a bridge between Silence and um, Hannibal. Hannibal. 
the because Claire movie. Reese's life in Handel sucks. <laughs> yeah, like there's some shit that goes down we don't know about. Because there's a ten year gap. Yeah, and there's there's like there's stuff that's not written yet that that like. You're talking about Hannibal the movie. Yeah, yes. Hannibal the movie and the book okay. and, and the book. book and so like and the I'm book, saying not the show. Not though. the right, show. Not the show. Sorry. That's okay. Um, which is confusing. I forgot. There's they're all three called the same thing. Yeah. But so the 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 book movie. Yeah. There's, you like the end of Silence of the Lambs. Clarice graduates and she's solved this. I mean, literally, she has solved this murder. Top of the world. Right. Top of the world. She right. she's killed the serial killer. She should have anything she wants, right? Oh, she God. could write her ticket. She was supposed to go work for Jack Crawford, and right, we don't right. know if, we don't know if she does that or not. When we see her ten years later, she's running. She's she's in charge of a drug task force kind of thing. So it's not behavioral science, any, behavioral anything. And she's like a you know, and she's involved in a situation that goes very very poor that ruins her career. Oh, and which forces Han- which forces Hannibal out of retire, you know, out yeah. of hiding to to help her. Because he stuff. likes her. He's in love with her. Yeah. Aww. I mean, you know that at the end of Silence, he is very much. I mean, in his cage in Memphis, he, there's a picture where he's drawn of her. Yeah. He's in love with Clarice. I mean, just yeah. and it's way worse in, in the eyes. right and way worse in the movie. So, I would have loved to see Mads Mikkelsen's version of that of being in love with. Clarice. They would have been fun. It would be fun. Because Mads is Mads is Especially after great. you know being in love with Will Graham. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you were on the internet, I, yeah. I, I think this movie's great. I think there's not a bad performance in this. I I mean uh, no. and I know we gotta get to the libation, but the, I just outside of Hopkins and um Jody Foster who were brilliant in this, I think Scott Glenn's Jack Crawford's amazing. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, uh yeah, we didn't even get into the Scott Glenn of Yeah, it. Scott Glenn's great. Uh, we <laughs> We did off air, but <laughs> Scott Glenn is a great actor, and he's one of those guys. He's been around for a long time, but he's one of those guys who's like always like in a supporting role. He's always a mentor. He's too. a he, and he's a great character actor. He's been in a bunch of stuff, and so we were before you got here. We were looking up like how many awards that he's got. He at least had to be nominated for an, uh, best supporting actor, and all have to be right, right? Have to because he's great in everything. He has one nomination. Total, for what? And it's a Saturn Award, which is the genre awards, the high, sci-fi horror mm-hmm. fantasy yeah. awards from nineteen from two thousand fifteen for the Daredevil, for Daredevil show for, for the Daredevil card um, live the Netflix, Netflix show. Sort, yeah, and I'm like two thousand sixteen. That's I guess, a damn so, yeah. shame. Scott Glenn has been Poor in guy. amazing films, and he's an amazing actor, and someone should recognize that. So. <laughs> So uh, when we have an award, when I come up with a cult movie cantina award, very first one's going <laughs> you know, to you, Scott, buddy. Scott Glenn, you get you're on it because you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it, buddy. So, but he's good. Brooke Smith as Catherine Martin, mm-hmm. the girl in the well. She's good. Oh, she's oh, good. just great. She's I, good. I believe she is fearing for her life. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's especially good. when like Clarice comes in and she's like, no, 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 don't go. You bitch. <laughs> Anthony Hill is Dr. Chilton. We a little bit. Yeah. Of, I mean, skeezy from the oh, moment. Yeah. You know, it's like I, you know, what are you doing, Raver? Whatever. <laughs> Baltimore can be a fun town if you have the right guide. And she's just like, I ain't having time. And then it. they get all the way to the end. He's like, you could have told me that before you wasted my time. She's like, but, but I, then I wouldn't have had the pleasure of your company. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> just, oh, I mean, he's just, snivelly. I don't just like so him. skeezy. Oh, like it's him. great. He does a good job. He just is. And he comes back for Red Dragon, but he doesn't come back for Hannibal. I don't, because I think no. So, so uh, what happens officially to Doctor Chilton in the books is that he goes missing. Yeah, they never find him, and we can just well, assume we assume he was going to dinner with yeah. an old friend. Right, and that's what we can assume. We assume right. Collector did away with him, but uh, breakfast. The the sh- no spoilers, but the show handles it a little differently. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so which uh, is all, like you said, <laughs> which is also, also good. good which is yeah. also good. It's very good. Uh, again, Ted Levine as James Gunn is just. Oh, I, I, I loved it. It was a great movie. So I, I, I know we gotta get the libation. Yeah. There's so much about this movie I want to talk about because um, I'm really I really like this film, and I th- one of the 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 neatest things in in is at, in the third act when Clarice is at. The house that ends up being James Gunn's house, and that, but we get they also we get to see what's going on with the FBI in Calumet City in yeah, Chicago. You, it's one of and those you, cool. You think they're going yeah, in the one house. Yeah, he makes you think it's at one one place. Yeah. The best part of that because because at this point, Catherine Martin has has got um, Buffalo Bill's dog, um, Precious, mm. in the well. Precious, <laughs> you don't hurt my dog. She's in a lot of pain, <laughs> Mister. Mister. 
Needs to go to a vet. Don't, don't, don't you hurt my dog. Don't you make me hurt your dog. <laughs> God, this movie's great. So smart. But I love when, like, Clarice hits the, 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 uh, the, the, the doorbell mm. and it got the crazy doorbell downstairs. Yeah. So he's got to go upstairs to take, take the, to get the, um, I'm coming, I'm coming. Right, right. He gets it and puts it on his pants like, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> it cracks me up every time I'm seeing this. <laughs> so two things screw this movie up. Okay. Let's do it. That that um like first of all, if he doesn't answer the door, no one finds out that he's there. Like he should have just not right, answered the door. Right, cuz Clarice is not expecting him. She's expecting Mrs. Lipman. Mm-hmm. Right. Two, if he doesn't ca- kidnap Catherine Morton Martin, no one knows about him because he just ha- accidentally happens to cap- uh, kidnap a senator's daughter. Right, somebody of higher standing. Right, which I think is like which is and where, for me, I found the ticking, I, I found the ticking clock a little bit more, sure, sure, tight than say Manhunter, right, but, right. Whereas Manhunter's clock is, oh, some random person's gonna die. When well, the, the but, clocks are different because we know we know yeah. we're told in Science of the Lambs that Buffalo Bill comes and kidnaps someone, starves them for a week, yeah, and then or keeps them for a week yeah. and then kills them, yeah. And Manhunter, the Tooth Fairy. Has a month. Has a month. He's on. He's on a lunar cycle. So when they meet Red, Red Graham, uh, Will Graham, they get. They have three weeks. Yeah. And so it's a little slower in that. Yeah. So yeah right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think that he often gets people at the door, and it would be weirder if he like? Do you think he probably felt like it would be? No, I think he's just trying to be a normal guy. Yeah. Like, oh, I like, get the door. Oh, yeah, no, like human beings get the door. Normal stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Human beings get the door. And so. Um, Draw no attention. I, also, like also like how she holds her FBI badge up. And, Quickly puts it down. Yeah, you don't. You never I'm, see it. Well, because I mentioned while we were watching the clip, I was like, because there's that scene where Hannibal says that, oh, it expires in what a month or a whatever? week, a week, it's yeah, a nice. week. And so I bet honestly, it's probably expired. I think, I think she's now self conscious about that. And he it, pointed out, of, yeah, yeah, and so right. she shows I just, it. <laughs> I never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. I, I it's like showing a permit. Versus a driver's license, license yeah. right? Right. You just do it quickly. You're well, like, in my it's day, a real license. Don't well, mind. in my day, they all looked the same. Yep. They were. You'd had to do that because nowadays uh, licenses, like if you're, if if I think it's still right, they're they're oriented different. If you're, if you're under twenty one, under twenty one, yeah, they're yeah. oriented different. So like, but in terms of a permit or a depending on state, right. depending on state, right? For, the for, under Alabama, yeah, for Alabama, yeah, for Alabama. And so I it's just okay. I I got to yeah. talk about this movie. Yeah. 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 I got, we got a show to go yeah. to. All right, all right. Time. What's our libation? <laughs> oh, you would like to know what our libation I am just, is? Yeah. I want to talk about this movie more, but well, I, I, yeah. I, again, addictions. It's just <laughs> such a good movie. God, it's, a, it's I no lie. It, look, I I had, I think a reason why I'm excited about this. I've always liked this movie. I forgot how much I enjoy this movie, and it's been real fun for me to bring this one to the. Did you bring Chianti? <laughs> 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 yeah, <some Chianti. laughs> Hell yeah! Enjoyed with <laughs> I love it. I yes. love it. Uh, I found out last minute that our Lady of Libations was not coming. Yeah, she's uh, under the weather. Yeah. And when that happens, I just try to do what I can. So no fava beans with it. Hold on. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want a TikTok of this? Yeah, I want to shoot some. We, we got TikToks too, so just you just, you just do your thing. I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> Straight uh, from a corkscrew purchase in Paris. <laughs> Paris. Makes it uh, taste better, right? <laughs> Where'd you go to Paris? <laughs> uh, Josh's parents did when we were married, and they brought it back. Oh, so you've had it for that long? Yeah. Wow. It stays in my lunchbox. And of course, it's going to give me a hard time now that I'm being filmed. So basically, you got the candy and the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Josh drinks a lot of wine, so. Uh, I think he drinks more than you would when you would know. Probably not. Well, I don't know if he does now or not. He always drinks beer and like liquor when I'm hanging out with him. Which has been a minute. I haven't seen you. I need to go over there. All right, Caleb. Yes. Would you like some? Yes. Yes, please. Oh, it looks like blood. I just don't want any liver. <laughs> or five remains. Yeah. Scotty, you are not having any Chianti, sir. No, I'm on medication. I can't drink. 
for those who were asking why why no Scotty never drinks. Medicated. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm very grateful that the Piggly Wiggly had Judge Bianca because I could have committed his insanity. <laughs> there we go. Get a good shot of it. Uh, I thought uh, I brought some in last time. We may use them the when she spilled things. <laughs> if not, I can. Okay, cool. I thought I brought some in to keep her. I forgot to uh, get some when I got. I got water. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I got some for that way. Next time we spill something for good to go. Hello, I'm back. Yep. Yep. I haven't had wine in so long. Is that keto friendly? Uh, it is. I searched that at the store before I purchased it. <laughs> so I was like, if it's not, then we can't. Like, Caleb can't. would be drinking it. I mean, <laughs> Caleb would be drinking all of the Chianti. Yeah, I, I'd take it home. <laughs> <sighs> How is it? Oh, I love wine. It's Caleb. delicious. I like wine too. Mm. To describe it for me, because I. Mm-hmm. It, it tastes almost like it would go well with. A good helping of mm. the sweet wine, a dry wine, it's lamb steaks, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a little liver on the sides, but definitely some beans. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like it needs beans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is a drier. Yeah. Red. Yes. Cool. So uh, you enjoy a nice canty the next time you watch Signs of the Lambs. Get you a canty. Yeah. I have some apocrypha because, of course, I have a lot of because you know this movie went through a lot of hands beforehand. So Gene Hackman brought the rights to the novel first. Uh, He planned to direct this movie and play either Dr. Hannibal Lecter himself or Jack Crawford. He withdrew after watching a clip of himself in Mississippi Burning at the 61st Annual Academy Awards, which made him uneasy about taking on violent roles. Uh Okay. Yeah, so and Hackman's a great actor. He's a multiple Oscar winner, and uh, he would have been... I think he would have been fantastic as Jack Crawford. I don't see him as Hannibal Lecter. It's hard to see other people as Hannibal Lecter besides the three that we've got. There were plenty of options, though. Uh, but uh, after Jodie Foster read this for the first time, uh, she tried to buy the rights herself, only to find out that Jenny Hatman had beat her to it. <laughs> wow. Uh, when Ted Talley was writing the screenplay for the mo- movie, he suggested Jodie Foster for the role of Clary Sterling. Foster had been lobbying hard for the part, but Demi, Jonathan Demi uh, was hired to direct, and he wanted Michelle Pfeiffer instead. Uh, Pfeiffer turned it down because Orion Picture wasn't was willing. Was it because of fava beans? No, Pfeiffer turned it down because Orion wasn't uh, willing to pay the two million in which she asked. How dare he? Also, she was nervous about the subject matter. Uh, she, well, they, every oh, you'll find out in all of this, they were all nervous about the subject matter. Yeah. I feel like that's good. If they weren't nervous about the subject matter, I would be concerned. Uh, uh, Demi then agreed to meet with Foster. He hired her only after one meeting because he s- said he could see her strength and determination for the part. He felt that she was perfect for Clarice, and he was right. She really was. She uh, did such a good job. But Jenny, uh, Demi also looked at 300 other applicants for the role. Uh, we've mentioned M- Michelle Pfeiffer. Meg Ryan also turned down the role because of uh, disturbing matter. Uh, Brooke Smith, who played Catherine Martin, also auditioned, and that's how she got Catherine Martin. And Nicole Kidman also read for the part. I'd be weird. I think Jodie Foster's perfect. Yep. I think Michelle Pfeiffer would have knocked it out of the park. Um, po- the um, not sure about Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan would have been fine, but it would have been. Uh, a di- they also a, looked at Laura Dern, yeah. but the studio wasn't so sure about her. Yeah, uh, yeah. Meg Ryan will look too ditzy. Well, Laura Dern hadn't done anything, and so like much, and they were like, "Who?" And yeah. they wanted a bigger star. Uh, Jodie Foster had been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. She would also had won an Oscar I mean, four years earlier. So they were like, oh, we have an Oscar-winning I mean, actress for this. Got a child star. I mean, she's right. been around. She had been around a lot. What did she win the Oscar for before that? Uh, the Accused yeah. uh, in 80 f- 88. 88. So. Okay. Uh, for supporting, right? Or uh, actress. It's one of the two. two. Uh, I can look. So... The list of people to play Hannibal Lecter <laughs> is yeah, long. Yeah, it's long. It's <laughs> so it's 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 a lot of the same people you normally uh, John Hurt, Chris, uh, Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future, Duck Brown yeah. as uh, Hannibal Lecter. No. Dem- Demi's first choice is interesting. Yeah, we, we'll get to that because I'm really really uh, <laughs> I'm, I want to talk about that. 
Forrest Whitaker was looked at. Uh, Forrest Whitaker was uh, Dustin Hoffman's Patrick Stewart, mm -hmm. Lou Gossick Jr., who had also won an Oscar, uh, Robert Duvall, Jack Nicholson, De Niro. Oh, uh, and uh, Jeremy Irons was asked, but he had just played uh, Klaus von Bülow in Reversals of Fortune. He won the Oscar for that and didn't want to play another dark character. Uh, Did they uh, just make a list of everybody they knew? <laughs> the, well, a lot of studios do that, and they yeah. go ask out who yeah. wants to do it. They'll, who, like, like they'll go, all right, here we want to make a movie. This character fits this description. It's easier to cast the wide net. Well, why, well, well this is, and this is what we can afford. And right. so they cast everyone. You get they, your first to qualify. And, and then they get their, and then they knock everyone else until they get someone they need, uh, which was interesting for um, Anthony uh, Hopkins, who wasn't a known name. Mm -hmm. He's he's a British theater actor mostly, much like Brian Cox is, and uh, he had done a couple of films, uh, the, the biggest being The Elephant Man, yeah, in the early eighties, and um, so when he gets offered, but it it changes his career completely he wins the oscar and then he goes off to be anthony hopkins he goes and does you know Dr dracula the remains of the day nixon he goes on and builds all these all these yeah. all these films and builds his career off that i think the same thing would have happened if michelle pfeiffer got it because jodie foster her career also blossoms but she also she also wants to direct so she works in yep. like little man tate is the first movie she directs but she makes it as a deal part of her orion deal if she'll do she'll do this movie that she's been dying to do but she's also like but if i do it you'll let me direct a movie and they're like whatever <laughs> and okay and so yeah. it works out that way i mean it worked out for anthony because of elephant man uh the the man that uh jonathan demi wanted the most was sean connery <laughs> <laughs> sean connery sean which connery. i'm I could. I don't hate. I could see it. I don't hate I it. I enjoy people with Chianti <laughs> and Fava. It's a different role. It's no, a different. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't be Dracula. He, no. he, he, Tell so me about the lamb. He'd be. He'd be the, he'd play it more refined. Um, blank check pointed this out too, and I have to agree. It would be how he would be in Finding Forrester. Okay. Yeah. And so it'd be like it'd be a scarier Finding Forrester. I'd like. Okay, I could see that. So I'm. I'd be curious about that. But yeah, Sean Connery. So. Um, uh, this is a call Honestly, up. a lot of those options I I could potentially see. Forrest Whitaker would be an interesting take. I would have I would love to see that. Um, yeah, it, Modern, well, yeah, at least today's Forrest Whitaker. I'm not sure. I think all of them. I mean, De Niro couldn't do it. Yeah, Robert Duvall couldn't do it. Jack Nicholson couldn't do it. Uh, Nicholson's a fine actor, but he. I mean, yeah, he, we've seen the Joker. And that's it's, the closest thing he's yeah. gonna get to. I it. mean, and, and Nicholson tends to play um, Nicholson. John Hurt would have been interesting. I don't think Chris or Lloyd could have pulled it off. Maybe. Hoffman, Hoffman is too Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't see Patrick Stewart being in that. Yeah. Uh, like, Captain it's, Picard can't be a bad guy. I don't, I don't know. know. Louis Gossett Jr. probably could because he was scary in oh, um, yeah. Officer and Gentleman. He's really good. So, I'm not sure. Uh, Michael Keaton, Mickey Rourke, and Sir Kenneth Branagh were all considered for the role of Jack Crawford. Ed like Michael Keaton, in general. Oh, he's I like great. Keaton. I saw The Flash, and he's really good in that. Uh, Ed Harris turned down the role of Jack Crawford because he wasn't he didn't find the role interesting. He wanted to play the Hannibal Lecter. Oh, sorry, Ed. Yeah. Uh Paul Verhoeven. We've done a Paul Verhoeven film. Uh he directed Starship Troopers. Mm -hmm. Of course he did. Uh, uh was offered the project first. And he declined because he thought there wouldn't be an audience for such a dark movie. <laughs> I love Jokes how on you. and the decision when he later regretted, uh Demi signed on after reading the novel. Uh, the film was brief, briefly considered for a direct-to-video release because, to, again, studio executives felt that the film's subject matter yeah, was too distasteful to market to mass audiences. Well, I'm also sure that they were probably scared of it flopping like Manhunter. So do you know when it was released? I think I told you, but... Uh, no. no. Think the I end of the year? Uh, so, well, no, in the year... So the, their movie schedules are weird, right. but they're purposeful. So, like, you release your movies at the end of the year because those are the movies you hope to get... Oscar nominations. Yep. Your Oscar movies come out in the middle. Oh, you, I know when this was. Uh, so cause it's um, it, it goes to where movies go to. Right, die. right. So it's one of the two months that movie goes to die. What, Summer. Uh, no. August is one time yeah, where they yeah. go to die. You, if a movie coming out in August, they don't have faith in it. Yeah. If a movie comes out in February, they have no faith in it. This movie came out Valentine's Day weekend. The studio had no faith in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Release it during the love week. Nowadays, exactly. <laughs> nowadays it's January and February, kind of that are the dead months but like less so wow. than it used to be yeah so i thought that was just valentine's a, weekend huh 
Valentine's Day weekend. You want to go on a romantic <laughs> evening, Canaries? Uh, my cousin, who I mentioned last week, who got the gym dolls, she saw it on our, one of her first dates in high school. <laughs> what a are they <laughs> still together I mean, today? No, no, they're because not. that would be the best ending to this no, story. No, not at all. But she told me, right? Because oh, I can't remember the guy's name, but she was like, "Oh, me and Soso went and saw that." Because I've been dying to see it, and I couldn't drive yet. Mm-hmm. And so, and my parents, jerk. I had to wait to come on video, so I couldn't see it. Yeah, she was well, kind I of. I waited until three days ago. <laughs> so but I'm glad you, you watched. Could have waited a lot longer. Yeah. So uh, to the grapevine, uh, all our fun trivia. Uh, to the grapevine. Jodie Foster claims that during her first meeting with Dr. Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling, Anthony Hopkins uh, mocking her Southern accent was improvised on spot. Foster's horrified reaction is genuine, and she, and she felt personally attacked. <laughs> she later thanked him for generating such an honest reaction. <laughs> um, after Lecter That's was delightful. moved from Baltimore, the plan was to dress him in yellow or orange jumpsuit. He is in a yellow uh, orange jumpsuit when he's on the um, he's in the uh, straight jacket. Yeah, Anthony Hopkins convinced director Demi to uh, and costume designer Colin Atwood. Uh, that the character would seem more clinical and unsettling if he was dressed in pure white. He got this idea because he has a fear of dentists. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fair. We've talked about this before in another podcast, uh, earlier podcast, uh, early season at least. At 24 minutes and 52 seconds of screen time, Anthony Hopkins' performance is the second shortest to win an ask, uh, Academy Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role befi- behind David Niven and uh, Separate Tables, who is at 23, 39 minutes. In the term of percentage of runtime, Hop- Hopkins is the shortest as he only appears in 21% of the film. Yeah, he just has such a large presence that it doesn't feel like that. Yeah. Well, and again, like this film, it's part of what makes it so fascinating is it feels like you're supposed to be paying attention to this. I forgot it. Billy, Bob, uh, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. Bill. Buffalo Bill. But it, he's only the supporting bad guy. Like, the real bad guy is Anthony Hopkins. But it's, but also, I don't know, it's just done in a way where it's so fascinating. Because you're like, so who is the main focus of this? I, but really, it's Clarice. So I, yeah, I, and I'm I, a, I, I, I would disagree that Buffalo is the secondary antagonist. He's, the, he's still the prime, like, thing to take down. I, I'm also in the minority of this, either. I, I don't think Anthony Hopkins' performance is, um, is uh, a best actor qualifier. I don't think he qualifies. No, I I, I, I think uh, he is a best supporting actor. Uh, actor, he's supporting Clarice in yep. this. Right, and she got supporting, didn't no, she? No, she got act- best actor. Okay. They, both, they won both best a- best yeah. actor. My point is, while he is a, I, I I think I think this movie lacks a a a primary male actor. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it has a bunch of supporting male actors. Yeah, because none of them. Are but there's not a primary one. Because Jack isn't there very long. Yeah, no. It's, it's and, and just and but but it's not just their length. It's just their roles. Yeah. Lecter's supporting her in her quest to find. Mm-hmm. She's the one who gets her on the quest, and so uh, I, I'm not mm-hmm. diminishing his performance. I no, think no, his no. performance is brilliant. It's just I think it was more of a a smart move on the the. Uh, Studio to, to put him up for the Academy. He's kind of the, the award. Anyway. He's kind of the besides the Oscars are fake anyway. But yeah. just he's kind <laughs> of the antithesis to Jack in this film because Jack is the good mentor leading her down right. the, the path. Right, and then he's the dark mentor. But here's the question: But is he? I mean, is he? Is he the good mentor versus like Jack sends her in with yeah, deception with a lie? Yeah, with a lie. I feel like ha- Hannibal is actually leading. Like, I feel like that's a good supporting person yeah. for her right because he actually helps her process in a weird creepy way process I, something deep the reason i think a dark mentor for him is because of like his motives right. for doing it well, not, oh, not not sure <laughs> not the actual actions themselves right. but you know what actually i'm gonna walk that back because i feel just from what i've seen of him in this so far and then the show mm-hmm. um without having had read the books mind you that he genuinely enjoys the puzzle of a person. So while I don't think that he's necessarily, I believe that he's truly trying to help. I her. think that's the psychologist of him. He just he just he can't help himself, and it's not necessarily maybe to benefit her as it is to benefit him. Maybe it's just a puzzle he wants to solve. But I don't think that it's a, a like a leading her astray or anything. I think he truly is like the things yeah. he says really do help her. So I think it was not in a malicious way, if you will. Hmm. It just was conversations that he can't he can't turn it off. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the production received full cooperation from the FBI. 
Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, they helped them. They, they filmed in Quantico and the whole thing. As they saw it was a potential recruiting tool yeah. to hire more female agents. I was about to say. Hell, I wanted to be I a female about, agent, I was about to FBI say. agent when I watched this. Yeah, I was about to say. If you see cops or military or anything like that on screen, it's because it's a recruitment ad. Yeah. <laughs> so, James Gunn um, um, lives in Belvedere, Ohio. Uh, same place that Ted Levine grew up, and so they shot it in Belvedere. They shot it in Ohio, and during location scouting for the house um, that James Gunn lives in, um, um, the what's the lady's name, Mrs. Oh. Lippman? Lippman's house. The yeah. Lippman's house. Uh, he was amazed to discover that the house was being considered was not only in the town he grew up in, but literally next door to a, his high school girlfriend's house. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> So much better. Reach out to them. Yeah. Be like, how you doing? I'm doing this really creepy <laughs> horror film right next, next door to you. where you grew up. Uh, Anthony Hopkins inv- improvised the flash slurping sound that Hannibal Lecter does. He did it spontaneously during filming, and everyone thought it was great, except Jonathan Demme, because he was annoyed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he denies it. He now denies it. Yeah. That he was annoyed, because it's iconic. Cause, yeah. It's iconic. You can't, you can't go against the iconic stuff, otherwise right. you're... Right. <laughs> Sometimes you're wrong, uh, Jonathan. Sometimes you're wrong. James Gunn's dance that... Uh, uh, Justin calls the the J dance <laughs> was not included in the original draft of the screenplay, although it appears in the novel. It was added at the insistence of Ted Levine, who thought it was a scene for essentially defining the character. And he's right. I think so too. We didn't talk about this stuff at all, but uh, because there's so much to talk about this movie, um, the moth cocoon found in the victim's throat. Oh yeah, that whole scene's great. Uh, was made of a combination of tootsie rolls and gummy bears. Oh, so in really? case, it, so in case it was. Yeah, uh, if they swallow, she could swallow. It was edible. It would ta- yeah, it would taste good. Well, that was nice. So the idea to use glass in Lecter's Baltimore cell as opposed to traditional bars came from the production designer uh, Christy Z. The idea came about uh, because director of uh, Jonathan Demme was unhappy shooting the Lecter scenes through the bars. He felt it, the, it negated the sense of intimacy between Lecter and Starling, which he was trying to achieve. Uh, and so, in Thomas Harrison's novel, Lecter cells did have bars, but they also have nylon net behind them in manhunter there's plexi- plexiglass mm. behind the bars so or in front of the bars so uh all right so i love this so there's a great scene where we find out like claire reese's whole reason to try to solve the Mul- buffalo bill murders is that because she feels this guilt from having to save a lamb that she couldn't save mm-hmm. right so she thinks that if she saves Catherine martin she will get those lamps to shut the fuck up <laughs> in her brain. Right. And she can just save one. Yep. Uh, we find out later in other st- uh, Starling stories, no, there's always going to be more lands for her to try always to stop screaming. Yep. That's another thing. Always so there's save. that great scene where she's in, in close up in Memphis and they're they're talking. And so when Clary visits Dr. Brunel, Lecter in the new facility, Lecter insists she continues telling a story about the childhood as part of the agreement. Clary reluctantly continues a story about uh, about running away. Midway through the confession, she mentions taking lambs with her. If you listen closely, she says, I thought if I could only save just one. A distant sound of something being dropped can be heard in the background. I went back and verified this. You can hear it. Uh, and I never noticed it until it was pointed out, So, which is great. I love those sound of things. And now we'll never be able to unhear it. But a crewman dropped a wrench during filming, and Jonathan Demi panicked, thinking it would ruin the scene completely. However... Jodie Foster remained in character and continued the story, ultimately convincing Demi to keep the footage. After cut was said, Foster turned to the head of the crew and yelled, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> <laughs> so now you got to go back and watch and listen, but it's very faint in the background. But you hear something drop. Um, C- could literally hear a needle drop. P- I would have been pissed. <laughs> like from back, yeah. being the producer backstage, I, I would have been the one that was like, "What the hell was that?" Yeah. So did you hear quiet on set? So how do they get Brooke Smith in the whale? Oh. Uh, <laughs> was there a ladder? So she climbed down? I, I feel like they, from I that face it's a no. I think they used no, I'm asking. Is that your answer? You think I, she climbed I, down? I mean. He, he says she climbs down. How do you? Are you talking about like logistically like, filming? Uh, yeah, yeah, filming yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. How, how, it, how they, how they, it. Not Catherine Martin, the, the actress, Brooke Smith. How they get her in the I well? I think they use a pulley system. Pulley system and a ladder? Yeah. Trap door. She cause, climbs up through the bottom and they covered it with dirt. <laughs> That's smarter. That's, uh, it's smart. I don't think yeah, it doesn't, it because it, it's not as deep as you think it is. Yeah, no. Because, I mean, yeah. for filming, you can use a lens to make it deeper. Yeah. Uh, they covered the whole, the, 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 
uh, trap door with dirt. Uh, Brooke Smith gained 25 pounds to play Catherine Martin. Well, to yep. become yep. a size 14. To become, are you a yep. size 14? Or, or, wait, is she a big fat person? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, once again, is she a big fat person? <laughs> like, like once again, was I was discussing girl, this. Sorry. I'm like, she's not that. <laughs> she's not. No, she's like Hollywood fat, but she's great. She's like, yeah. she, she like, looks wonderful. Yes, sir. She was a big. She was a big girl. <laughs> uh, we mentioned this before. Daniel Dillaretis, uh produced Manhunter, passed yeah. on this movie because Manhunter flopped. He gave the rights away to Ryan for free, and then went to co- co-produce Hannibal and Red Dragon because, I um, mean, he's back in the, the Hannibal business. Yeah. He was like, oh, it makes money? <laughs> uh, the tobacco hornworm moth was used to be the death head moth and was given celebrity treatment. They were flown first class in a special carrier. They had their own living quarters, room c- with controlled humidity and heat, and were dressed in uh, carefully in carefully designed costumes, body Aww. shields uh, be- bearing paint and crossbones. So I, I want to know who this is. A, how do you get a position as bug dresser? <laughs> How how hard is it to dress a bug? What a lovely m- life that moth had, though. <laughs> right, and then the, you like, would have to reach out to probably people who handle bugs and be like, "We need someone to dress our bug." Yeah, right. Like, how do we how do we do this in a way that's not going to? That's open. not a position I ever thought you would be like. Yeah. Oh, we need a drug b- dresser for this one. Listen, I, I, at this point, anything's possible. Yeah. At twenty nine, Jodie Foster became the second youngest person to win a, two Academy Awards. Uh, behind the uh, yep. Louis Rayner. She won twice for best, uh, both Best Actress uh, performance giving in. Uh, her first one was at the age of 24 for The Accused, and then, of course, this one, she was 29 when she won for uh, Sons of the Lambs. Uh, I, she looks like she's older in her late 20s, but she's like she filmed it, and she's like, she, she started 26, turned 27 making this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and this movie has a couple of cameos of other famous people. Uh, David Lynch, who is a famous director. He's the guy shouting uh, for Cindy to t- get in the ring for Starling when s- when they pull her out to go look at the first Buffalo Bill victim when she's training. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Lynch happened to be on set today, and Jonathan David was like, well, you want to say this line? And he's off camera when he does it. George A. Romero, who uh, created the, the the modern zombie genre, Night of the Living Dead and all that stuff, he's one of the, um, the guys pulling Clarice off uh, in Memphis after she's given her lamb speech. Uh, Roger Corman, also a famous director, Oscar winner. Uh, Oscar winner. Uh, and, uh, he's made like a hundred movies, including creating the original Little Shop of Horrors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he's the head of the FBI. That is like, did you, did you make an offer with Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> and like Crawford's like, yeah, I did it. And he's like, yeah, well, the center's pissed. He's that guy. And then Chris Isaac, the musician, he's one of the um, s- the uh, SWAT team guys. For this. Um, I have two clips I want to show you. Okay. So, <clears throat> one of the things I'm fascinated by this movie, I, and next week we're going to get a lot in this because next week I want to talk about the deleted scenes because, spoiler alert, there are so many deleted scenes, and if they were all included in the movie, it literally would be a different movie. A different movie with a different tone and a different story. Weird. Yeah, and I can't wait to share some of this stuff with you because I want to. Do you wanna, have a copy of it with the deleted scenes in it? Yeah, well, no, I don't have it with it, but I have all the deleted scenes. Like it'd be cool to watch it all together. Uh, it's weird to put it. It'd be hard to put it together. Yeah. I think, but you could, be you could. A try. potential editor, yeah, an editor could, probably could. could you I mean, you could. I mean, yeah. Um. So after Lecter kill, talks Migs into killing himself, he is being punished. If you remember, right. his, yeah, because they take his paintings. Yeah, they take his paintings. Yeah, he's in and, trouble. Where he's in trouble for being bad. But one of the things that they do. Is they put a gospel program in front of him? Mm-hmm. That he has to watch. Yeah, he's he has to. And it's only and turned down uh, for their meeting. Right, right. And you don't really see it, and it's it's just in the background for just a, m- a second. Um, Jonathan Demme had a friend come in and make the gospel program. <laughs> <laughs> like it's an actual thing they made. They, this That's is, cool. and so I've got a little bit. I've got, I've got. Th- it's a seven minute clip. We're not going to go through the whole seven minutes, but I just want to show. And I'll I'll put a link in it so you can watch it. But I wanted to share some of it with you. So I thought this was fascinating. Proud to be with you today. <laughs> good to see you today to the sick, the shut in, the can't get around is very good. The arthritis done got hold of you. Arthritis done I got hold of me. I want to bring a little bit of the book into your living room today. 
and proud to see you. Jesus said that life is brief, death is sure, and that to every man someday he's going to have to walk down through the valley, dutta shatter, dutta death, and we've got to ask ourselves before he walks, he's going to have to be right here on earth with the rest of us. So and this guy, I don't have his name. Um, he's like a theater actor, and this is 100% improvised. They were just like, be a preacher, and he did it. And and they made it, and they and and like they don't even show it. You don't see it, and so it's just, it's. I like that it says, "Free us." Yeah. You yeah, didn't. Didn't just shot it. But you can watch it all. I'll also I'll, I'll put a link in, in the notes so you can see it, and I'll share it on the Facebook page because it's crazy. But I thought it was fun. That is fun. Thank you for sharing. So, um, we've done this uh, before with Quick and the Dead, and I, I mentioned uh, any time that I could find a Siskel and Ebert episode that covers one of the movies we do, I would share it because we talked about. I'm fascinated by these two guys. These guys were so important to me growing up. And so I just want to share this with other people. So I have the actual review for Signs of the Lambs. Okay. As, we, as we know, it, there's two guys, and they, they, mm -hmm. they review the movie, and they either give it thumbs up or thumbs down. So before we watch the review, mm -hmm. I want to know um, what I'm, do you— I'm going to say thumbs so, up. So Sis Siskel is the skinny guy, well, over the heavier guy. So you think they both give him a thumbs I up? I think they both give thumbs Bo up. Both thumbs up. With my brief knowledge of them. Mm -hmm. Kayla, what do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be split. Because um, I feel like... I forget. I think Siskel's not going to like it. So Ebert likes it, Siskel, so thumbs down. Yeah. All right, here we go. Where a young woman is held captive and terrorized in a well. The horrors of female abuse are... Too much with us, I think, now to be trifled with any more in the movies. We had this complaint about uh, the picture involving Julia Roberts. I have it again here. I didn't learn a thing about serial killers from this movie. A much more honest, less exploited film on the same subject was last year's Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. By contrast, The Silence of the Lambs is a star-studded freak show directed by the usually enormously talented Jonathan Demme, who I think for the first time in his career has picked a surprisingly trashy project. Well, this is a tough film to review because, of course, in terms of its subject matter, one can easily target it as you have. And also, I think that the ending doesn't really work. Once she gets into the house of Buffalo Bill, it does become a standard who's behind this door, who's going to jump on me from the shadows. The first part of this film, though, Gene, is terrifically effective, partially because of the real tension, the dynamic interaction between Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins. It's one of the most peculiar and fascinating relationships I've seen in a movie in a long time. Hopkins is very good here. Foster is very good here. The dialogue is at a very high level of intelligence, and the movie works not perhaps in the same way as Henry Porter of a Serial Killer, but effectively. And I think that you're really shortchanging a lot of skill no, no. and craft and art that went into this no, film. No. You know, sometimes you say, I think you blew it on this one. I think, I think you're being too easy on this picture in, in this way. <laughs> he is presented, uh, the Anthony Hopkins character, is presented as this big evil thing, and we're going, our, going down there to see them, a, a journey into hell and all that. And frankly, he was so pumped up, and the music was so pumped up at such a high level it that worked I worked for me. It <laughs> worked. Well, then you're easy, because, I, because for me, I thought, oh, come on. Uh, a guy who's truly frightening doesn't need, uh, you know, a, a huge organ playing in the background. I, I didn't buy it at Gee, all. this is the movies. What did you want? A documentary? <laughs> black and white? You know television? Shoot it on no, video? No, the thing? reason why Henry the Portrait of a Serial, serial Killer works is because these people, my intuition, I don't have any first of that now, it's, these people tend to be kind of dull. Well, they're two different kinds of movies, and you're using one to criticize the other. Yes, we of, always do that, Roger. We why, say better picture than the same subject. Why can't you criticize subject. this on its own terms instead of saying I'm what I'm criticizing it on its own terms. I didn't, uh, wasn't compelled by anybody except, I suppose, the Jodie Foster character as a strong woman. Come on, a great performance. Not a great performance, a decent performance. She's Anthony following, Hopkins. No, great. I thought that was way overplayed. They... I don't like him. <laughs> So, so Caleb's right. Siskel doesn't like the movie Ebert does. Um, well, for Siskel's a th dick. This, this one's kind of famous uh, because 
Ebert for years afterwards until Siskel's death would hound him about how wrong he was about Signs of Lambs because, as we know, it goes on and wins lots of things. All, yeah. all the awards. Like he says, Jodie Foster's performance was okay. Yeah. It wins Best Actress, and then he discounts as Anthony Hopkins at the end of the uh, interview the review at all. He's famously like hates this movie. Yeah, and thought it was terrible. Uh, and, 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 and so I got curious and. While Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is fondly remembered, it's, it's, and a good movie, it's just it does nobody like if I were to bring that film up versus Silence of the Lambs, one of those is going to get discussed right, right, more. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Most people have seen, have seen Silence of the Lambs, so yeah. I, I, so that was fun. Yeah. Uh, it's awards. It won, like I said, it won best actor, best actress, director, and screenplay and best picture. It's only uh, one of three movies to have done so. Uh, it also was selected by the Library of Congress for its uh, his cultural and historically mm -hmm. preservation si significance. So yep. Cisco was very very wrong. <laughs> you want to close this tab? Oh, let's close uh, it on. I, I do. I do want to bring up one trivia piece that I'm surprised we didn't bring shot. up in either this or Manhunter. Uh, Ted Levine actually showed up to the Manhunter rap party, and that's part of why <laughs> uh, he was in discussions for this movie. Who's that? Uh, the one who plays Buffalo Bill. Because okay. he was actually friends uh, with uh, Peterson at the time. Oh, yeah. So he actually showed up to the Manhunter rap party. and Okay. So he has previous connection to the, the franchise. Okay, then. So as I said, so this movie, uh, you want to guess what it made? <laughs> <laughs> Opening what? weekend. Opening weekend was February fourteenth. Uh, stupid time to do it. I mean, I mean, I'll, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the time. I'm not good at this. Uh, Can you give me a range? Uh, I'll tell you. It's thirteen million. Okay. How much did they? Um, like, what was the budget for it? Uh, I don't have. Uh, Caleb, can, can you find the budget for this? I have what it made domestically. Yeah, uh, budget was nineteen million. So it made nineteen million domestically. It made one hundred thirty million dollars. World, uh, and yeah, so uh, now well for the year, yeah, for the year, okay, okay, yeah. I was about to say, I got that bigger budget for war for the final box office because I'm on box office mode, yeah, mojo, so. yeah, yeah. I, I just had Wikipedia pulled up, <laughs> they tend to be good at showing box office, but they don't crunch the numbers as much as box office mojo. Um, so it almost made its budget in the opening weekend, yeah, it did, yeah, in. February. Yeah. In February, yeah. And you gotta understand, Orion Pictures was almost out. They were, they were. Yeah, they were dying. They were facing bankruptcy, and uh, this kind of saved them for a little bit. Not long. They ended up going. Um. Uh, I don't have the. Um, I don't have the weekend numbers because it they they only have the Thursday numbers, uh, so that sucks. Oh. So, but I will do all time. How about that? We'll do um, yearly. I should do this earlier, and I forgot to. Uh, this is 2000, uh, 1991. All right. Silence of the Lambs does make the top five of the year. Do you want to know where it ended? I'm going to say number one. It is not number one. But, uh, good, well, good it's in the top three, then. I think maybe four. It is number four. Well, not in the top three, then. Number four. That's lame. Uh, number. number five is a Billy Crystal movie with the, um, that also features the best supporting actor of this um, year. It's oh. about um, uh, cities. <laughs> It's City Slickers. I was going okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. to give the hint away. Yeah, you were about to yeah. say it. I was trying to describe it. I went City. I was like, oh, I might as well just say the whole damn thing. Yeah. Um, I would not have number four, that. of course, is Signs of the Lambs. Number three is a movie we've done on this movie uh, on this podcast. It's a holiday movie, probably one of the biggest holiday movies of the 1990s. I don't know. I never know. You, We saw this. I think I, that's saw, delightful. I think we saw this together. In is it Die Hard? No. No, no. Is that the holiday movie? Yeah, it, I, I, I'm not disagreeing. Home Alone? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well. Mm. There it is. Number two is a Kevin Costner film that is not Dances with Wolves. Oh. 
Because <laughs> I don't want to go ahead and nix that one. That was the year before. That's the one I was going to guess. <laughs> uh, it's it, also not about water. Uh, it is a famous story told many, many times in all kinds of media. And Mel Brooks has specifically spoofed this version. Yeah, and he has spoofed this one specifically. This one and the Errol Friend one from the 30s. I have no idea. Uh, Caleb. Uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Prince of Thieves. Had that god-awful Brian Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I do, I do for you. Yeah. Is number one a, is number one a Disney movie? Number one is not a Disney movie. Okay. Well, it's not 95, so it's not Toy Story. Well, uh, the, Dis- Disney, the Disney movie you're thinking yeah. is number 13. Oh. What Disney movie is he thinking? The one that won an, an Oscar. Nominated, yeah. yeah. Nominated. Nominated, yeah. The first Aladdin? Nope. Nope. One year before. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, yeah. Okay. Beauty and, Be- Beauty and the Beast has the uh, the distinction of being the first animated film for being nominated for Best Picture. And then they decided. Sure. Then they decided animated films aren't allowed to have Best Picture anymore. Well, no, they still do. Uh, They're still allowed. They, yeah. they, but they also gave them a separate category. Yeah. But they, they didn't do that until much much later. Yeah. Uh, uh, the number one movie is a sequel. It's it is one of the rare occasions that the sequel is bigger than the original film. Oh, is, is it, it a Star Wars? No, no, no. no, no. But it is a sci-fi movie. I would yeah. call it a sci-fi movie. Star Trek? No. No. Aliens? No. No, but you're on the right tr- Same director. track. Yeah. <laughs> Same director. <laughs> we haven't done, done these movies. We should, though. Uh, that's as far as I got. It's uh, Terminator 2. Oh, Day. yeah. We haven't yeah. done those. Um, number six is Dances with Wolves. <laughs> so another. Uh, which he did well. Yeah. yeah he did. He had a good year. Um, number seven, Sleeping with the, ni- with the Enemy. Which is a, gr- a Julia. That's, that's a good film. It's a good film. It's a Julia Roberts movie. I didn't realize it made ninety four million dollars in that year, though. That's a lot of money. <laughs> number eight, <laughs> The Adams Family. Ooh, the yeah. Adams Family. Uh, number nine, The Naked Gun. Uh, two and a half, uh, The Smell of Fear. Yeah. And number ten is Go Ninja, Go Ninja, No Go. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Secret of the Ooze. Oh yeah. And so, so which we've not done. We haven't done any of those. Um, I've actually seen one of those. Uh, I'm trying it's to the th- one where he has the toy and it keeps coming back up. I oh. think Home Alone may be the only. I'm looking real quick. I think Home Alone is the only one we've done. And uh, uh, 91. N- 91 um, we've done a lot of other movies that are like. There's a lot of sequels of this mo- uh, movie. Come out. So, yeah. So that's. Oh, one of my favorite. No, it d- oh, no, found one. Found it. Warlock. We done Warlock. Oh yeah, we done yeah. We done Warlock. So that's there. We we've, we've done some that are pretty low on the list. Yeah. yeah. So we have to keep scrolling. Yeah, that's why I got down to the past 100. And I'm like, oh, there, there we are. <laughs> there we are. So, uh, Silence of the Lambs. What do you think overall? Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie for many reasons. I would highly recommend it. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm definitely gonna watch it again. I watch it. I've already watched it three yeah. times this week. I'm uh, but I'm now. I'm like you. I'm now kind of like I should watch Hannibal. Yeah, I'm watching I'm, Hannibal. I'm, I'm, I'm What's Hannibal on? What have you been watching it on? I think it's on who. Um, I I I don't know. I I've opened up. so many of those recently. I can't remember. I think Maybe it's on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu too. But that's what I'm or currently Hulu watching. Well. I'm pretty excited to go home and watch it again. Uh, I think some more. I should say. That's what I'm gonna have to wait till after dinner though. It is indeed on Hulu. Good. You guys can watch Hannibal on Hulu. Eat some hamburgers. For Are they hamburgers, though? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> hamburgers and beef. And a nice Chianti. Uh, this is Guy saying this is our contribution to the multiverse. Go out and make yours. Say goodbye. Bye.